Like a cussick without a mustache, I'm Greg Struess, your disappearing host. <laughs> Welcoming you back to The Greg Struess Show, almost live and direct here from Cable Television City in the west side of Chicago, and I'm glad that you are joining us this evening or whenever you're watching. Uh, we are on every Wednesday night on Comcast Xfinity Channel 19 in the west side of Chicago, western suburbs of Chicago, and of course on YouTube.com where you can comment uh, under the words Greg Struess or The Greg Struess Show. Uh, either way, I'm glad that you're joining us tonight. Now, a lot has been going on with uh, a lot of race talk, homosexual talk in terms of identity, uh, non-binary or non-conforming gender speak, uh, political affiliation, etc. But one of the areas that I find fascinating in all of this is how the media, okay, news organizations that claim that they're not doing it, and of course, bloggers, et cetera, as it applies to the Jesse Smollett uh, attack or alleged attack that, it, that allegedly occurred in Chicago at the end of January of 2019. All right, this is an actor, a young man, uh, 36 years old, I think he's a young man, uh, and, and successful on a certain level, right? I mean, he's on a, a television show on a major network uh, he's performing in concerts, had a record come out, you know, came out. Uh, he's admitted that he's uh, openly gay. He's African American. He's, I believe, is Jewish. And has been requested to come in to answer some more questions from the Chicago police. Now, what I have found interesting about this case, and right now, because things are still in process at the time of our show being produced, I'm, I'm just surmising some things as well, because probably by the time we air, a lot of this has probably already, um, you know, as, as the great Flo Turley once told me, she, I used to work with her at a pizza place. She was the original owner of Brunetti's in Riverdale, or I believe it was Harvey, Illinois, and then later went on to Brunetti's Pizza. It was great pizza in Riverdale, and I worked there forever uh, as a teenager in college. And Flo, you know, everybody used to call her Mama Flo. I just called her Flo, and she was terrific. And she always said, as she's rolling out the dough, listen, whatever comes out, whatever, you know, it always comes out in the wash. And then as I was giving up uh, a drinking problem and attending meetings and working at a place that focused on recovery work, somebody else added to that, whatever doesn't come out in the wash comes out in the rinse. <laughs> and I really think that that's true. So... When we discuss the truth as it applies to things in our life, is it my truth, your truth, or the truth? The truth only has one, uh, one thing, okay? I, I don't know if I can say one thing. One point is the truth. The truth is the truth. The truth is what it is. Now, in a story, there's, or in a confrontation of some kind, there's my side of the story, your side of the story, and obviously the truth. So the truth is always in the middle. So what is the truth? So if we take, so what I want to discuss tonight is that when we look at the truth, whatever the truth is, it's, it's getting down to the truth, right? Whatever the truth is. So taking away all those hot buttons, okay? The politics, the religion, the sexuality, and the political affiliation. You know, all of those things are what? Areas that people can either agree on or disagree. Obviously, if it's political, there's going to be half of people that don't agree and a half of people that do agree. Maybe I should do this, okay, because it's coming together. So people agree or they don't agree. The truth lies in the middle, and the truth never lies. Now, a lie is a lie. <laughs> Does that make sense? I can fabricate a story, make something up, but what is the truth in that story? There really isn't truth. The truth is, is I fabricated the story. Now, as I look at the Jesse Smollett story of the alleged attack, what I started doing is doing deductive reasoning. And it's funny how this, you know, politicians from a, you know, a certain political party started commenting right away before all the facts were in. Certain news personalities or so-called journalists started piping in. And then in the end, Without doing what police officers do, deductive reasoning, okay, we start deducting from, you know, what's going on here. So I threw all of that out and I started looking at the behavior. 
And what the behavior told me is that, and the body language during this Good Morning America interview, is that maybe Jesse isn't telling the truth. And I'll tell you why he's not telling the truth. It's because of his behavior. Now, if I'm a victim in a crime or an alleged victim in, of an alleged crime, alleged means that it hasn't been proven fully, okay, because I'm taking someone's word, and the, the evidence is suggesting what? Yes, this could have happened because what? Evidence is showing that, you know, something occurred. Bruises, I was hospitalized, I had a, you know, in this case he had a, a, a rope around his neck. Allegedly, uh, a chemical was thrown upon, upon him. So I threw all of that out, and I started looking at the timeline. 40 minutes to report the crime. I wasn't going to report the crime. And then things that were said, uh, you know, that my, my phone. Now, now look, in Chicago, anytime somebody gets mugged, what's the first thing they usually take? They steal that expensive cell phone because that phone is worth money. People sell those phones, you know, to buy drugs or whatever. So I started doing the deductive reasoning and saying, look, it took 40 minutes to report the crime. Then the police requested the phone records. It took weeks for them to receive the phone records, highly edited. And then they didn't pass muster with the police. And then they arrested the two alleged assailants uh, or people of interest at an airport after flying back from a foreign country and bringing them in for questioning and then 48 hours later released them without charges. A day later, Jesse, or during this time, hires a crisis management team as far as the public relations to get out in front of the message, all right, or to control that message. And we're going to talk about that when we come back, as well as, uh, you know, these hot point issues and how this is affecting us in our daily lives and the, the America that we're living in today. And I'm glad that you're joining us tonight. I'm Greg. This is The Greg Strew Show, reinventing community television here in the west side of Chicago. Thank you for joining us, and we'll be back in just a moment. Welcome to The Greg Struess Show. I'm Greg Struess. We were talking before the break about Jesse Smollett, the actor on, and performer on Empire, which airs on the Fox Television Network. And it's been a pretty successful show. Uh, obviously, as shows are on longer, they age, and ratings start to dip off a little bit. But what most producers want to do and what networks want to do, they want to get at least 100 episodes out of a show and typically that takes almost five years. Why? Because then they can strip it. So that means they'll sell it into syndication to another station or Fox stations may buy that program and air it, you know, air it on, like MASH was aired, okay? So maybe they'll air, Channel 32 may air Empire every, you know, uh, nighttime at 11 o'clock, five days a week. So there's enough episodes to sell in syndication, so they strip it. So the idea is to get five years out of a show, and, and then they can make the real money. And um, anyway, that aside, getting back to the story here and how it relates to what's happening in America. I'm, I, I want to talk on a personal level here when I, and when I look at this young man's behavior. And, and people are talking about what he did or what he didn't do, and, I, and I'm sorry, when police start leaking things, when things start leaking out of organizations, there's a reason why. One, it's to protect the integrity of the organization, all right? And in police work, you have a superintendent in Chicago. It's a huge metropolitan police department. And what is, who is the superintendent? The superintendent is in charge of the entire police force from the detective division, the captains. They're in charge of all precincts in the entire city. So they carry a lot of weight. But are they appointed or are they sworn personnel? In this case, in cities, yes, these are police officers, right? They, they um, carry guns, 
full police officers, but they're administrators. So they're not really policing anymore, they're administrating. And in the case of a superintendent, they have to answer to the mayor. So on a certain level, they are what? Politicians, because they keep their job by keeping the mayor happy or satisfied, or the community, right? And there's a reason why they're there. They represent the community in a certain way. So what happens is that the rank and file may not appreciate being caught in the politics. So even though the superintendent says one thing, speaking on behalf of the entire department, some people in the rank and file who are close to an investigation or whatever aren't buying it and start telling the truth. All right, we're talking about the truth. What's the truth? Is the truth what the politician is saying or is the truth what the detective or somebody within that circle of trust, as I call it, <laughs> Love that, the circle of trust. Robert De Niro on um, Meet the Fockers. <laughs> it was great. He told Ben Stiller, you're not in the circle of trust. So that's what I always say when I'm talking to people uh, and we're having a private conversation and it doesn't go outside the circle of trust. So people start leaking information because they want the truth to be exposed. They want to contradict what the politician is saying or what the company line is because that's not really the truth. Now, in this case, who knows? Now, does race play a game? Maybe. But I'm sorry. If I walk out and I say, look, I'm openly gay, I'm a Caucasian American, and I hate the president, and I hate this, and I don't like this, there's a lot of hot buttons in that. And one is, I can't say that I'm a Caucasian American, because that's racist. I can't say that I'm white. And I can't tell you how many people joke with me about, oh, well, you're the white man. You don't understand. And I don't, you know, and I laugh at that. I really don't take it personally. I think it's kind of, I think it's kind of funny on a certain level. But I don't know what other people have faced from certain ethnicities. And I can't say that being a, a white man in my, you know, now in my early 50s, that, uh, you know, that it's the same as, as being a younger white man. I don't know. I think people are a little more caution, uh, cautious. I, I don't know. And it depends on where you're at, too. So, I, and who you're with. So I don't know. I, I have a lot of different, I know a lot of different people from different ethnicities. I respect different view, points of view, but please respect my point of view as well. And respect me as the person. I think really what this boils down to is that we have to respect each other on a personal level. So if we take all of this out, all of the race baiting and all of the jumping to conclusions before all the information is out, it further divides all of us and each of us. And what I hope to, you know, discuss, listen to me, what I hope to, you know, discuss is how the behavior kind of plays into all of this. So Jesse Smollett reports an attack, and I'll put in quotations because it hasn't been proven, it's looking that it didn't happen and that he staged this for whatever personal gain. Uh, and, and as the former counselor in substance abuse, it, it raises my red flags on a number of different levels because people start making ridiculous decisions when they're in an addiction. Now put narcissism on top of that. Narcissism, it, you know, you hear about this term, narcissism. A narcissist is somebody that doesn't have any feelings for other people's emotions, a lack of empathy, sympathy for others. It's all about them. How many of us have been in relationships with people like that? And how many of us work for people like that? It's all about that person and what they want. What I want, what my needs are, don't matter because that person is more important. Their needs are more important than my needs. And there's a lot of that going on. We see it in politicians. We see it all over the place. So I'm gonna throw this one out with the Jesse Smollett, Smollett um, story. Why would somebody, and again, I'm, I'm surmising, I'm taking a guess, or, or just putting this out there. Why would somebody in Jesse Smollett's position on a successful show makes, you know, decent money, probably about three, three, four hundred thousand a year. That's pretty good money. It's more money than I make, probably more money than you make. Put his career and life in jeopardy in, in possibly going to jail and throwing it all away. A certain part of me today as I'm reading, and I've been glued to this story for a number of reasons because I just think it's fascinating that somebody in the public eye who has more than most would want to make a decision like this 
and, and, and not really think it all the way out and how it would affect not only himself, but others. All right. So talking about the narcissism, you know, what about when I report a crime? A crime is a crime, all right? But a hate crime, something, you know, a hate crime is a crime that is committed on somebody that fits into a certain group, all right? If I'm, if I'm, uh, if someone is homosexual and, and they're attacked by a group of individuals who are not homosexuals and they're called certain names that apply to people that are gay, uh, and because they were attacked because they're gay, that is a hate crime. The same is that if a, a group of black folks jump a white guy, that's a hate crime. Same thing that if a group of white guys beat up a black guy or a Hispanic guy or et cetera. You know, hate doesn't have any limitations on race, religion, et cetera. Let's, let's put the truth, you know, let's, let's tell it like it is. What does that do to the people, or what does it say to the people that really have suffered at the slings of a hate crime. Is that thinking about them? So I'm wondering, did he really think about how others would be affected by a fake police report? Probably not. And a certain part of me wonders if Jesse Smollett was trying to assimilate his character, right? His character is a hip hop artist very successful in the public eye. He's openly gay in the show, his character. And I'm wondering if Jesse just wanted more attention and to promote some political cause because in the uh, conversation and the interview with Robin Roberts, he talked about how he does not care for number 45 and we know that that's President Trump and said some terms in a tweet that was I don't know, released about a year or so ago where he called the president an N-word with the A at the end. And I'm just kind of wondering what's going to be the fallout of that too. So is there a political agenda in this, the hate? What are we propagating and what was he trying to prove? So was he trying to sell out his concert? Um, was he trying to help two Nigerian brothers who were born in Chicago and needed some extra money? I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. But what I do know is that the truth never lies. And if we do deductive reasoning and we remove all of the emotion from, you know, if we can remove all the emotional issues, what we call the hot topics, the hot buttons from a situation and look at, you know, and do that deductive reasoning, the takeaway game, okay, let's look at this, 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 this. It doesn't add up. And so when we do the deductive reasoning, I say, look, cut the crap and look at the behavior. What is the behavior? Because within the behavior lies what? The truth. <laughs> the behavior is where the truth lies. And more often than not, and I've talked about this on a lot of our shows here, you know, what, you know somebody says, I love you, I want to be with you. But what is the action? What is the behavior? Is the behavior measuring up to those words? And more often than not, they aren't. But what do we do? We're conditioned to listen to the words and not look at the behavior. Now, the truth lies in the behavior. That's my, my thought. So in, in saying this, I think what's going to happen, and this is going to happen within days, not weeks, I think the police are going to finally haul him in. They're going to charge him. And... And that's just going to be at the local level. I think the feds are going to come in, and they're going to do their work as well. Now, a lot of people laugh at the U.S. Postal Service police. They have, a, they have a police department that is not to be trifled with. And you think, well, the real police. You know what? Anyone that carries a gun and a badge, you know, that's not a security officer and has sworn police personnel in the state of Illinois or the state of California, state, federal, et cetera level, is a police officer. You know, they have the power to arrest, they have the power to enforce the law, and it's different in each jurisdiction. But when you're talking about the U.S. Postal Service, and let's say I start, you know, let's say I write a letter and I send a threatening letter to, to somebody in the public eye, uh, they're going to investigate it. And if they find me, I'm going to be charged federally with a mail, you know, some kind of uh, federal law. It could be mail fraud, it could be... Um, inciting violence through the mail. 
I'm going to be charged with that. And chances are likely I'm going to be thrown into federal prison because it's a federal offense. So did Jussie Smollett commit a local offense, state offense, and or a federal offense? That's what we're going to find out. And uh, I certainly don't, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not happy about this. I, I feel saddened for the guy on a certain level that he would have to go this far. But I'll tell you a personal story about somebody I dated and that narcissistic um, side of the equation when we come back in just a moment. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Welcome to the Greg Struess Show. I'm Greg Struess. I've been having a problem with my microphone that I wasn't aware of. It keeps turning. I'm like, don't turn on me. Don't turn on me already, okay? We're talking about Jess Jesse Smollett. But before we continue with that, I want to let you know that we're on YouTube.com with the search words, The Greg Struess Show. And I've been hearing from people, and I'm smiling about it, because some of you think I'm a doctor. I am not a doctor. And I'm not even playing one on TV tonight. Uh, I, I appreciate you. <laughs> I am not at that educational level. <laughs> I do appreciate it. I'm, I'm not even, you know, I used to crack a joke. I'm not really a doctor, but I play one on TV. It was a, it was a joke, but I am not a doctor. I'm somebody that's lived uh, an interesting life, I think, on certain levels, and uh, hopefully made me a little wiser and a little more self-aware, and I try to share that each week that we get together here. And I appreciate you tuning in, and of course, you can watch us on YouTube.com with the search words, Greg Struess. You can also Google us or use a search engine and probably find us that way. I'm a little slow in uploading those shows because we also air on Comcast Xfinity every Wednesday night at 8 o'clock here in the, on Channel 19 here in the west side of Chicago, western suburbs. So again, thank you for taking the time out to comment. I really appreciate that. So we're talking about the truth. Uh, we're talking about a lot of different things tonight as it applies to the Jesse Smollett story. Uh, this young man was allegedly attacked in Chicago at the end of January during the polar vortex, which was the coldest, coldest record of weather in our history. All right, something like 50 below zero. I was working in it, okay? I'm like out working in this stuff. So just like the Postal Service, Greg is out there too. And I wish I had their benefits, but anyway. So we're talking about the truth as it applies to this. We're talking about behavior and, of course, narcissism. And that narcissist, uh, and I'm sure some of us have been called that. And in addiction, many of us do suffer from narcissism. Why? Because we can't see outside that other people matter. It's all about us. It's about my infliction. It's about how I feel. And, you know, if I don't feel good, then you shouldn't feel good. Because, you know, after all, it's all about me. So I dated a, a narcissist or somebody that was a narcissist, and I ended up in therapy for a while <laughs> after. And to be honest, I've probably been single ever since, too. But I compare what Jussie Smollett, you know, this case, which has not been uh, proven yet that, there, that it was uh, a hoax, but I, I dated somebody that worked for a major company who had a project that was supposed to take three years and completed it within eight months. Now, the individual in question uh, could have went anywhere in this company and was here on an H-1 visa from another country and was really a rock star. He could have went anywhere. We attended the party, the celebration for the completion of the project as we're out on the uh, Washington on Lake Washington in Seattle, Washington on a ferry having a, a great party. And, and I just remember sitting there like, gosh, your, your, your life is just ready to take off. And you know what? Within a matter of weeks, it was thrown away because the individual in question decided to go and, you know, I, I don't really know because here we're talking about the truth, right, and what really happened, okay? All I know is I got a phone call one day stating that the individual who I was dating was fired or asked to resign and trying to get the information why kind of was like pulling teeth, but finally stated that I took some money orders that were in someone else's mailbox 
and went to nine different Safeways and cashed them, and they caught me. Now, would that have been a relationship killer in most places? Because what is that? Is that honest? Is that the truth? And in fact, when I was told about this, was the truth even told of why this individual was let go from the company? No. But to further go, as far as the narcissist will go, not only did the individual not really admit fault, they went and applied for a better job and ended up getting it after doctoring their last paycheck stubs to show that they were still employed. And even though that H-1 visa was sponsored by the major court company, that was out, but somehow saved it through a course of lies and went on and lived happily ever after while Greg fled California and came back here and has been struggling ever since. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> He's been single ever since. <laughs> but you don't have to share my pain. My story is this. I see the similarity in that neither this individual who I was in a relationship with nor Jussie Smollett were happy with what they had. An enormous amount of success at an early age was just not enough. They had to have it all, and at all cost. And really, when I have to have something at all cost, what am I doing? Am I thinking about others? Am I thinking about the uh, consequences for my actions if I'm acting in an unethical or dishonest way? No, I'm not, because it's about me. And I'm not going to get caught because, you know, I'm Greg Struess. It doesn't work that way. I, I really feel, and that's where karma comes in, that if I continually dump on people and I'm doing bad things, it's going to come back to me twofold or tenfold, and I think this is what's going to happen to Jesse. He got caught in a lie, and he can't lie himself out of it. And he certainly isn't going to tell the truth either, because if he tells the truth, what? If I tell the truth, what's going to happen? I have to be accountable for my actions. And I don't want to be accountable as a narcissist. So the best way to handle a narcissist when they start to bully you with, well, you know, you never measured up or whatever, and you, you just kind of cut it and you say, you know what? I disagree with you, and your tactics are not going to work with me anymore. So we're done. Uh, and and co totally take, you take control, I'm taking control of the conversation, and I'm taking control of this relationship by ending it. Because you know what? You're not worth it. And what's going to happen to people when they lie, they get caught. And, and here's what I see, and I've seen it in my family. You know, people have laughed at me, oh, you're just too honest. I'm sorry, I, got, I can look myself in the mirror and say, okay, you know, maybe I'm not where I want to be, maybe I'm not perfect, and maybe I have some you know, things to work on, but at least I can look myself in the mirror and say, you know what, I don't have to look behind my back because I, I screwed somebody over. I, I, I don't have to look behind my back and worry that somebody's going to take me out because I lied about something. I have to live with me, and I think in the end that's what it is. The truth will always prevail, and the truth will always come out, because remember, what doesn't come out in the wash will come out in the rinse. So I think there were some good points made tonight. Uh, and again, I appreciate you tuning in every Wednesday night here on Comcast Xfinity, Channel 19 on the west side of Chicago, as well as on YouTube.com with the search words, The Greg Strews Show. Please drop me a line. I love hearing from you. And again, let's be truthful. Let's be honest with each other. Let's respect each other. And most of all, let's accept each other as Americans and as citizens, and as, not necessarily citizens, excuse me, as Americans, people that are, you know, that are participating in the American process and the American dream, and let's, let's celebrate our similarities and respect our differences. Greg Struess, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again next time. Goodbye, everybody.